Hello, my name is Richard Weitz. I am a senior fellow and director of the Center for Political Military Analysis here at Thatson Institute. Today, April 7th, has been a day of chaos in Kyrgyzstan. There's been a series of riots, protests in the capital. Or as we speak, there are rumors about the president has fled the country or gone south to raise a, an, uh, supporters to engage in some kind of civil war. So we still don't know what will happen, but I think we have a good sense of why there's been such chaos in the country. Uh, when President Bekiev came to power about five years ago, he was swept into power by what was known as the Tulip Revolution. Uh, at the time, uh, he said that he wanted to go against the old regime, which was seen as corrupt, favored in nepotism, incompetent, and so on. But as he's taken power, it's appeared that he's been following the same kind of mistakes. The, uh, the latest re State Department report on human rights has criticized government for imprisoning the protesters, for imp improper detained and detention of people, uh, all sorts of violations. Uh, the family nepotism problem is seen to be fair, uh, fairly strong. Uh, there's addition, the country's economy has suffered severely. It's located, it's landlocked, it's located near China, but in a near western China, so that's not a very developed region of China, so it's not benefiting from that kind of, from the, the Chinese economy. It's a bit distant from Russia. It's still pretty much under Russian economic dominance. There's not much foreign investment otherwise. The, uh, the result is that the country, a lot of the people are still very poor, and you could see this many of the protesters seem to be unemployed or uh, basically not people who have suffered recently. Um, the uh, interesting issue, though, is what will happen now. Because Kyrgyzstan, although it's a very poor country, uh, and uh, it's also very ge geographically sit well situated to have some influence in the region of Central Asia and Afghanistan. Both, it's interesting in that both Russia and the United States have military bases in Kyrgyzstan. It's very unusual. Uh, the Russian base, is, it's been there for several years now at Kant, about, uh, about 20 miles from the capital. It, Rus Kyrgyzstan is part of Moscow's Central Collective Security Treaty Organization Alliance. At the same time, there's a U.S. base at Manas, it's, uh, and it was very prominent uh, last year because the, the parliament uh, voted to ask the U.S. to leave. There had been a series of incidents that had upset some of the local people. Um, and they, what happened was in, they, the government relented and said, yes, we could stay, but they raised our rent, and the United States now had to pay a lot more money. And there's some fear that some of this money has been going actually to feed the corruption. It's been going to the family, not the people. Uh, looking ahead, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this affects our uh, U.S. relations with the country. The best outcome would be if the new government that comes in power, if one does, is it doesn't it gets it stops the abuses of the old regime? It becomes more democratic uh, and much less corrupt and, and more economically uh, thoughtful, uh, and allows the U.S. to keep its military base because then that's the best of both worlds. We we'll have a more comfortable local government. The worst outcome could possibly be if a group comes into power or the old regime stays in power and continues these bad practices, because then the United States has to think what extent it's willing to work with a government which is not meeting its uh, U.S. Uh, standards in terms of human rights and other policies, but still has an important air base which we need to, to can carry out the war in Afghanistan. So that's something we need to look forward to, to figure out basically what, where U.S. priorities rise and lie, and I think it's something we can all discuss. Thank you.